I think the first time I met Coach Hicks was in class. Um, it was a, a history class, uh, 1987, Corbin Middle School. Uh, I met Coach in 1995. He came uh, <clears throat> to be the head coach here, 94 actually. Never played basketball. I, I, I was uh, an eighth grader who, who never played. Still in college, came over and uh, helped some, was interested in getting into coaching, knew that I felt like I had a call to coaching. And uh, uh, I was playing football, I was playing baseball, and uh, uh, Coach Hicks was like, well, you need to think about playing. Got around him in the early beginnings there and was able to see how he did the individual improvement and things like that, just things I'd never seen before. And I'd played, you know, uh, college basketball, played coming through here. And, and um, so he gave me the opportunity to work with the boys. Next thing you know, uh, I'm playing basketball at Corbin Middle as an eighth grader. That's my only year uh, to play as a middle schooler. And uh, when that year concluded, he said, we're having an open gym at the high school. He said, why don't you come on out? And, uh, you know, from, from there, uh, as, as a freshman, 1988, uh, I was on the varsity team and, uh, you know, was very uh, blessed to have Coach Hicks uh, coach me for my four years. And um, thing about it was, you know, it, it really kind of laid the groundwork for me to see it was a blessing to see that good of a uh, basketball coach in his element. Lo and behold, I get to work with him uh, when we moved to Scott County, and uh, you know, it's uh, just been a relationship uh, that that uh, I, it's just I can't say enough about uh, what he's done for myself and my family. Well, Billy's got a um, a passion, and when he sees somebody else, when you're young, you've got that passion. It's easy to have it when you're young, and and I think he. He saw that, you know, he kind of just threw me in some fire, and, man, it was fun. And I said, boy, I said, I can't wait to play this last year of basketball so I can hopefully get back and get and help him out. I drove up, and I'll never forget, I, I met with, uh, I think it was Ron Wilhite, Dr. Blankenship, and Jack Williams, John Krigler, uh, Bill Jones, the principal. Dr. Blankenship, so, you know, just – listening to him and being with him and seeing you know how excited he was about the new school and how, how the passion he had for sports and and the whole school in general but and, and wanted a basketball program uh i left here thinking man if they offered me i i'm probably going to take that and we rode around uh we spent the whole afternoon just riding around scott county meeting people seeing people he showed me places and then he got the, the plans for a new high school out he had them right with him. He, he unfolded those things, and, and he showed me all that and everything. Of course, I was interested in the gym. That's what, what I wanted to see. And, and uh, it, it really was it, it was a, it was a game changer because just uh, I saw the passion he had, and I didn't see that in a lot of people. You know, he had the same kind of passion I had. Uh, I got back, and they called and offered me the job. And I told him yes, but I, I said, you know, just don't announce it until I have a chance to talk to my players at Corbin and talk to the people at Corbin. And so they, I went ahead and signed it. I went up the next day and signed, but they didn't announce it. I had a chance to meet with the team and everything and do that. But again, it was, uh, it was very, I, I, I'd been at Scott County. We won the, when I was at Harlan back in 85, I guess, we won the first team camp Georgetown College ever had that year with Coach Reed. I brought the Harlan team up and we won the won the All A won the All A that year at Harlan. I was familiar with it and, and I and I saw the potential. You know, was Scott County as good as Corbin when I came here? No, no. But you know, the potential for basketball was off the charts here. You got a greater march there. The beauty of Coach Hicks's system. And I've tried to explain it to people, and, you, and it's really hard to do. You have to have a basketball mind, really, to even understand. If the kids will work, the kids will improve in our system. And uh, he loves to, he has a joy for that, to see the kids get better every day. It sort of came up with, with, with my own style of play that I have done. I really don't, didn't model. I never was a, I was assistant coach for about five or six months. I really didn't, I didn't play for no, Adolph Rupps or anybody. I, I, so all everything I had to do had to come up on my own. It's a system that he's developed, basically, and uh, something that he started doing in the 80s. We wanted to play uh, 
We wanted to play man to man defense. You know, I, I just always really believed in man to man, especially at the high school level, because we don't have a shot clock. So we're going to get after teams and make them play. There's been a couple times where he would throw a zone in and it would like never work. And so he was just, he was just, you know, I'm going to teach man to man. I'm going to get really good at it. We're teams are going to get really good at it. And we're not going to have to do anything else. And we're not going to have to change. Back in 1973 or 74, I knew I was going to get into coaching. And I took a notepad at it. And I've got that somewhere. I've got to find it again. But I wrote down my philosophy of basketball as a coach. You know, what I believed in and what I, how I was going to coach and what I was going to do. And it was just a paragraph. It wasn't but, it, but it said, everything I did as a coach was going to be built around player development, developing my players. Because I said, you're not going to win without players. I remember that's one of the first things that he talked to, to me about was that he really prides himself on end of, uh, you know, developing players individually and helping you become the best player you can be individually and then, and then molding that everyone together as a team. So really our style of play offensively, defensively, the way we practice it is around developing our players. We play man to man and we play pressure because we want to speed the game up and get more get and get more shots, more reps. We want to get after you. Some people say, man, you should do his own. But you know, I, I really respect how many games he's won. And he teaches that one thing defensively. Offense, offense in basketball, in my opinion, is easy. I grant it. You gotta have people who can make it. But offense is uh, you know, you can run offense and get kids good at going. Teaching defense and getting kids to play defense is really hard as a team and as a unit. And, uh, and I've learned that probably more than anything else, uh, uh, being with him, is how hard it really is to teach that unit defense. Because if we sit back in the zone, people would hold the ball on us all the time because they know our face. We want to play. I remember in the, in the City of Palms a few years ago, we were playing Dunbar out of, out of somewhere in Florida there. And, God, they were quick and athletic. And I thought, gosh, I'm out of here. I think we can beat this team if we just get back in a real, what we call solid, our containing defense, and not pressure, don't trap, and just switch, switch screens and do all that. And I said, because we got a container dribble. We beat Dunbar 42 to 41. <laughs> Dunbar held the ball on us. <laughs> so I thought, gosh, I'm out of here. I said, I'd rather get beat than win a ball game 42 to 41. So I said, we're not going to do that no more. <laughs> I played basketball my entire life and, and been to countless practices, but Coach Hicks's were a little bit different. It's just like a, a teacher that comes in to teach a class or a pastor that's getting ready to preach a sermon. You know, there's time that is uh, spent in preparation and he spends preparation time thinking on that practice. Most practices are it's a bunch of team drills and throughout the entire practices, his practices are more of at the beginning, you're working on individual skills, shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, and then the second half of practice will be more of, of you know, playing five on five, three on three, working on more of the, the team drills. Uh, it's a planning uh, time for each practice, not just games, but it's for each practice and yeah, very detailed. He is still to this day the best practice coach I've ever been around. Um, his practices are, are designed to make you a better player. Uh, they're designed to make you a better person and uh, it, it's just incredible what I've been able to, to learn from him and, and, and how he's helped me grow. Now in our practices, if we practice two hours, that, that, my players are going to have a ball in their hand for at least an hour. You know, we want them, that ball in their hand because you got to play with the ball. And the more they learn how to handle the ball and shoot it and, develop, and, and do things with it, they see themselves, hey, I can play this game. The game becomes more fun. Uh, one thing I had never seen anybody do this before, and we still do it today, is we, he played full court three on three. Told me that he didn't believe in running sprints and suicides. And it struck me funny. To play this game, he said, you, you can't get better just running. So I want those kids to play basketball and run, and that way they get in shape while they're playing. I never heard that. Man, I was just like, man, that's, 
I said, that's fun. That's basketball. You know, Corbin uh, loved their athletics, and they still do love their athletics. Coach Hicks was a big cornerstone in that. Uh, you know, that, that gym was packed. We started the Cumberland Falls uh, Invitational. So, and, and, and that was really, it was grown into one of the best tournaments in Kentucky. So when I came to Scott County, we had no tournament like that. There was nothing going on. And so I, I got with Dallas Blankenship and, and, and uh, Helen Donaldson, who worked at Toyota, was in charge of, I guess, that department out there, and, and Billy Parker. Me and Dallas and Billy and Helen, Helen sat down and laid out the groundwork to present to Toyota. And Dallas called me about a week later and said, well, I got some news. I said, what? He said, Toyota accepted, not accepted, they want to call it Toyota Classic. I thought, wow. You know, I, I thought they may call it some little thing or may not, may want to put up some money for it, but not use their name on it. But when they decide to put their stamp on it and give their name to it, then immediately that becomes one of the top tournaments in Kentucky. Me and Billy Parker pretty much ran the tournament the first few years, did things. And then I think after a couple of years, uh, Sonny Dennison took over as athletic director. And, and to be honest with you, that's when it took on a new life. Now, you know, I, all I have to do is play in it. I didn't have to find teams. I didn't have to, all I have to do is play in it. And the Sunday started with the, with the car raffle and, and they started making piles of money off of it. And all the money from it, Toyota, everybody put into it, went into the, the general athletic fund. It took on a new life then. They, they, took it, they took it to the level it's at now. We went to state quarterfinals the first two years, and then we graduated a lot of kids. We graduated in particular uh, Michael Richardson, one of the leading scorers ever in the schools. So when Michael graduated, so we came back with relatively a young sophomore team the next year. The sophomores, A.W. Hamilton, uh, Toby, Toby Harris would have been a junior. Mario McIntyre would have been a junior. And had a decent year that year. Didn't make the state that year. But then over the summer, one big plus was Rick Jones. Rick brought a big work ethic. A.W. Hamilton already had it. And, and, and they really fit in good with Toby Harris and Chris Wallace and Casey Hossum and those guys. And it just all, all fell together. And we we got our draw, and everybody said, "Wow!" So here's Scott County, the number one scoring team in the state. First round, we played Union County, the number the number the number one defensive team in the state. And the coach has been a, a coach with Adolph Rupp. <laughs> She's been around forever. So our state tournament draw, everybody said, "Oh, Scott County got a great team," but nobody, you know, gave us a chance to win the state. You know, nobody. So. We we beat Union County the first night, and then came back and beat uh, beating Highlands. Highlands was a, was a load, beating Highlands. And then the Lexington Catholic game, of course, that's been documented so much. It was one of the greatest games ever in Kentucky high school basketball, and the quality of it was that way. I mean, high, Catholic. Gosh, I, I would hate to beat them twice. I had to beat them twice. <laughs> they had one of their best teams they've had in their history, and then in the semifinals that Saturday morning. Uh, maybe one of the greatest games I've ever seen or anybody seen in Rupp Arena. Uh, they're down and Rick Jones comes down and hits a on-the-fly three-pointer to beat Lexington Catholic. And just the reaction from that game uh, with Billy, with the players, with the fans of Scott County, uh, I think that was the moment they arrived in the big time in, in, in state basketball circles. Yeah, that was uh, sometimes everything falls right for you. You know, the biggest thing I remember as a player is, you know, Ashley and Tyler and Betsy, they were they're in the gym with us. Betsy, uh, she does the social part of it, for sure, as, uh, as a, you know, she's watching the ball game, and, of course, they're gonna, people are going to come talk to her and visit with her, but she still takes the ball game in. Betsy coached with him, too, just a couple rolls back. So she's, of course, seen as much ball as Billy and they're about because she's been right there with him. And, and of course, his kids, Ashley, she, uh, it amazes me that be, we'll be playing away and Ashley will show up. And when Betsy can't be there, Ashley sometimes will be there. And, and, and of course, Tyler. 
the sense of urgency, and it was Tyler Hicks who made play after play down the stretch to give the Cardinals a you shot. Know, Billy's always said I'd never trade that experience I had being able to coach my son ever in the world for anything. Probably, without a doubt, the hardest worker I ever coached, the toughest kid I ever coached. He, he played it as hard as Billy coached it. I'd coach him, the team, him a part of the team, just like everybody else. The only thing I ever said to him personal was, you play harder than on the floor. And, and he did. As tough as Tyler, you know, played, Billy's that tough as well. And I would love to have watched him. I would say Tyler was a direct mimic of Billy as he played. Relentless. I mean, he just gets every ounce of potential uh, out of his body, and he just plays extremely hard, and it's, it's a credit to him. And it was Hicks who came up with another huge steal and tied the game at 72. As That's why I love, a lot of what I love about Kentucky high school basketball is the coaches and the people were so nice because they, they, they appreciate how he played. He played so hard. Uh, it just hasn't sunk in that, that it really is over for him for this year. And But I've never been any prouder. You know, we've had teams that have been state champions, and, and I've never been any prouder of a team now with this team. The only time I thought about, about uh, getting out of coaching, and I remember my mind to retire, we get out of it, was the year Tyler died. I remember him sharing with me one time you know, even after after Tyler's passing, I remember him sharing with me and saying that um, what, uh, how it was just such a blessing that Tyler was such a great friend to him after the playing days and being able to come back and they're just so tight, you know, and, and they said it's just neat to watch him turn into my friend. Actually, I went, I, I, I was gonna resign. I was gonna quit and get out of it, but my daughter, uh, it's, middle, it's middle of the season that year. She said, Dad, you, you've never been a quitter. I said, why? She said, you're quitting on these kids? And still here now. <laughs> so, no, I didn't quit. But, you know, I coach every day like I'm going to coach forever. But, you know, I, I also realize it could be one year at a time. You know, what do they say? You want to make God laugh? Tell me plans. <laughs> In 2006, we had a horrible upset in the in the regional finals with uh with Madison Central. We played really good. They they made the play at the end and the kid hit a big shot and they won the game, beat it beat us in the regional finals. Of course that was the first year in the eleventh region. Um it was just heartbreaking. Um actually came back from that game and started shooting right in the gym. Lights were off. Me and my dad were getting up shots. And even and their fans, even their players were really hard on us. They they really they were on the bus yelling at our kids and stuff. And that really sunk in. So I, I think that next year, right from the first practice on, we wasn't going to lose nobody in Kentucky. Right then and there, I set the goal, not only for myself, but for our team, that we were going to be state champions. I tell you, when, it, when every team starts back in August, the first of school, conditioning and, and everything, uh, you know, you, 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 your, you want to be here. You dream of being here. You can't make it a goal because it's such a tough goal to reach it. But you, but you start dreaming about, gosh, you know, we can be there on Saturday in, in March. And uh, it's, it's really great to be here again. It really is. Because every time you leave here, you think, God, will ever get back here again on Saturday morning. So it's really good to be back on Saturday morning. The sheer magnitude of playing in Rupp Arena um, could give anybody chills. you got 18,000 people watching you. It's, it's really fun. It's really intimidating. But we were up for the challenge. We started the season ranked number one, us in Ballard. And us and Ballard played the championship game. Bad pass. And it's picked off. Here comes Stanley. Gives it to Hamilton on walls. Hangs up. Puts it down. Still a lot of time. 322 in the third. Strong move to the basket. Puts it up and in. Put over to backboard. Warren over to walls. Works on Gowers. Puts it up and in. Nice transition basket by Scott County. 29 the state championship. To Mackey. He lets a three go on the left side. He hit it. It's a trade. And the Cardinals of Scott County are your 2007 National City KHSAA State Championship. We knew that we wanted to win his second for him, and that's what our entire goal was from the get-go. Um, we wanted to outwork everybody. We wanted to show everybody that we were as deep and talented as we were. We were down in the holes of Rupp there, and down in down in the locker room. We had just come off the floor, and Billy. Runs in really quick, says, everybody sit down, sit down, sit down. And um, he, he said, everybody sit down. He said, you know, the Lord has gave us 
a huge amount of success. And uh, undefeated in the state of Kentucky that year, 32-0, and 0, said, you know, we need to make stop right now, and we need to pray that we're going to be able to use this use this success for good and not use it for bad things. We need to pray that we use it for good. He said, guys, if you'll do that, you guys that are seniors and go on, he said, he will grant you more success because you're going to use it for good. I don't know. It's, uh, it's meant a lot to me, and I'll never forget it. To be the best, you got to beat the best was kind of his motto and our motto. And um, we knew going in that we could play with anybody. Um, I think that's pretty evident when we beat O.J. Mayo and Patrick Patterson when they were number one in the country when they played for Huntington. Well, you know, I, I'd watch tapes and, and everything that I watched. And of course, I knew O.J. was, was phenomenal and Patterson. Of course, I, I, and they had good guards, had a good supporting cast. All those guys were five Division, division one players. Defense has always been our great equalizer. We felt like that if we could, if somebody, every time O.J. put it on the floor, if we, if we jumped him and made him give the ball up, we'd make the others have to do something with it. Of course, O.J. probably still got 40 against us, but he didn't get 100 against us. But, and, then, and, then, and, then we, and then Jordan Lee done a really good job on Patrick Patterson. But that was a special night. I, I think we played their memorial, the packed house, the memorial, Coliseum. And it felt good because it was good for Kentucky high school basketball. Because, you know, in the, in the, in the paper the next day, OJ had a great quote. He said, I told these guys, they thought they were going to come in here and, you know, and roll. said, but they play basketball in Kentucky now. He said, the Kentucky teams would be tough. And so that, that was. Uh, that was really a special time. You should have sent Mike down the lane and let Cooper pop. You went to the opposite side. You sent Cooper down the lane and let Mike pop. I never looked upon retiring from coaching as retiring from work. I've never, it's always been fun. I've never thought about going to work. It never, it never hit me as I'm going to work. If I never made a penny of coaching, I would have still coached. I hadn't made many pennies at <laughs> that, but, but I still would have coached. I would have coached for free. Coaching never has. Coaching never has been work, work. I saw a Willie Nelson interview a few weeks ago on a Sunday morning, and the guy asked me about retiring. He says, retire from singing and traveling? He says, that's what people do when they retire. <laughs> they sing and travel. Well, when people retire, I know a lot of coal miners, they retire from coal mining. They, they get them a little ball team and coach it. You know, Most of my coaches growing up were retired, retired people. So retire from coaching, <laughs> and you have to be lazy to do that. <laughs> community in Scott County and the way the community supports basketball here in Scott County is really just unbelievable. You put that Scott County jersey on, Coach Hicks on the sidelines, you're a pretty good player. He's unbelievable at uh, catching fish. He spends all summer catching fish. The main thing that stuck out to me, always stuck out to me about Tyler, was how hard he played during the Open Gym. Our team knows we were going to give up. We were uh, down by four, however much time was left. And uh, that's just a testament to how much heart and uh, guts this, this team has. I've I've been very very fortunate and and I, I my family and all of us like I say without uh, basketball you know who would who would be without basketball that basketball I would be just Billy Hicks from ages bottom trying to catch a fish out of Clover Fork River and the Cumberland River. <laughs>